This right here is no, not a Raspberry Pi, no, not even an orange pie. This is the Banana Pi M2 Pro. This right here is a little single board. This right here is a little single board computer that you can find somewhere between $50 and $90, depending on where you look. And at least according to the Geekbench tests that I've already ran, the processor on this thing basically gives us the exact same performance that we would see with a Raspberry Pi 4. Now with that comparison, there are still some trade-offs when picking something like this versus the Raspberry Pi. One pro with the Raspberry Pi is the community and the software availability and all that that you get with the Pi Foundation and how long it's been around. And this thing only has two gigabytes of LPDDR4 memory. Our use case for today, that is gonna be more than enough, but if you're somebody who wants to use one of these as a desktop computer, that is not going to be enough. And then one edge that this has versus the Raspberry Pi is the fact that there is 16 gigabytes of uh, eMMC flash storage does perform significantly better than trying to run an operating system off of the SD card slot. Later on in this video, we're gonna be flashing Ubuntu to this eMMC flash storage and then setting up just a couple quick services just to show you that you can use something this cheap to host your very own home lab. Here on the front, we have some of our main stuff, including a five volt power connector. We have full size HDMI gigabit ethernet and two USB 3.0 ports. That is another difference between the Pi 4. There's much more options when it comes to I.O., but I do really like the fact that it is a full-size HDMI here. Looking over on the side, we actually have an infrared sensor, so there's the numerous use cases you can use for that. We have a little micro USB here, which I plugged it in, and it looks like you could use this for power. And then we do have a couple SW switches. This one's SW3, this one appears SW4. On the other side, we do have a little reset key just by itself over here. Of course, we have our 40-pin GPIO right here. We have a little debug I.O. there. And actually looking on this board, going from the smallest chip over here on the side, that is our Bluetooth and Wi-Fi chip. Next to that is that EMC flash storage, and then we have our processor and then those two gigabytes of LPDDR4 memory. And then on the bottom of the board, we actually have our little SD card slot right here. Now, I do like this one because it has the uh, kind of spring-activated mechanism so you know for sure that it's in there push it, pops out, super cool. When it comes to the actual form factor, it is a little bit bigger. It's kind of a pro and a con at the same time. It's a pro in the fact that it's actually a little unique and it's not just a, a direct ripoff of a Raspberry Pi, but it's also a con because you can't just use some Raspberry Pi printed case that you could just make yourself or buy on the internet. So yeah, it is a near perfect square. Now, I'm gonna have to interrupt real quick. Are you a fan of single board computers like this? If you're a tinkerer, a doer, you just have ideas that you want to bring to life, just wait. For me to tell you about our sponsor, PCBWay. PCBWay is your one-stop shop for all your full-feature custom PCB prototyping needs. Everything is incredibly affordable. You can get an instant quote right on their homepage with all the options you need, including dimensions, quantity, layers, thickness, and they actually have a new 3D printing service so you can have your 3D CAD models printed professionally. And there's all kinds of options, including these specific materials, colors, surface finishes, and really a whole lot more. In addition to this, they have sheet metal laser cutting, CNC machining, and you can see here under products and capabilities, really everything that they could do for you. It's quite extensive. And if you're needing something, anything to do with PCBs, PCB way is definitely the way to go. So down below, the very first link is going to be to PCB Way. So you go ahead and get your instant quote, check out what they can do for you, and again, turn your models and ideas into reality. With that, right now, I am on their wiki page here. You have a lot of useful information. You have all the specifications. I kind of just ran over some additional things that I did not talk about. So if you want to learn a little bit more about everything that's on here, you could go ahead and check that out and compare it to things like the Pi 4 here. But what I'm gonna focus on real quick is scrolling down past all this. We have our resources, system images, Linux right here. This is kind of what I was talking about, uh, software availability, you kind of got to rely on them to keep this updated and all that. There's not a lot of huge communities around these uh, alternative companies, but personally I haven't ran into any significant issues. The Ubuntu image we're going to grab later is right here, it's the uh, server image. It is 2204 from 2001, but it did update just fine for me when I went ahead and tested it out. But what we're going to do real quick is download this right here, Raspbian. It's the Raspberry Pi operating system, comes with all the really handy tools. And basically you just go through the same process that you would for a standard Raspberry Pi. You have your images here and you just go down, you pick the one that you need. The latest update was May 5th, 2020 right here. 
and you download that image and you flash it with your favorite software, whether that be Etcher or even a GNOME Discs or GNOME Discs, whatever, which is what I generally use. And then of course we plug in or put in or you know what I'm saying. We put the SD card in. Clip right there. And now what I'm going to do is boot this up. We're going to jump into the uh, desktop environment operating system, kind of check it out, see what it can and can't do. And then we are going to go ahead and jump into a server and then actually kind of a proper use case for this is server instances, because this is not a super high power device, unless if you really just need a cheap computer. It might take it a minute to boot up the very first time, partially because it's an SD card, but I'm, I'm just going to show you around the system and show you kind of what it can do. And I mean, it's really not too shabby. Let's go ahead and load up a good old YouTube video. Ah, they just changed the UI. It's funny how these corners, these rounded corners they added, absolutely made anything with borders just look like garbage we got some crab rave all right here we go we got a youtube video rocking with some advanced statistics you can see at its current resolution it's pretty smooth it's dropping some frames here and there you kind of see the lines across the screen and it's really not going to let me bump this one up any higher but th this is about what you're going to get when it comes to the uh the video feedback 720p almost perfect but loading basic websites that don't really have video and all that is going to be completely fine this is our newsletter here you should probably subscribe to it. it's pretty awesome we're getting some artifacting, but really nothing too bad. Very usable in the sense of a web browser. One thing I want to show you real quick before we uh, flash Ubuntu server to the eMMC is the Pi configuration. If you want, don't want to use, or if you're even on another system that doesn't have the uh, availability of flash storage built in and you tend to run out of room, this is the wrong tool. There it is. You type in sudo raspy config. And then here, I believe it's under advanced. Yep, expand file system. Yeah, select that right there. And it gives you full access to all the uh, the room on that little micro SD card that you have in there. If you want to use this operating system as a server, they do have that option and this tool is available in there. So you can just uh, expand the file system on your server directly from the SD card. And you'll be good to go. What I'm going to do real quick is show you how easy it is to actually flash an image to that flash storage. And I already have it downloaded. I kind of pointed it out earlier in that wiki. If we go over here, I already have it in a folder and there it is. And it's also here in my downloads as well. So I'll probably just navigate there. Oh, zoom in a bit and CD into our downloads. LS, there's our image. And now what we could do prior is a little sudo fdisk-l. What this is going to do is display all the uh, disks that are available on your system. And we know for sure that the uh, flash is 16 gigabytes. So let's find what the closest thing is, which is this right here, dev MMC BLK zero. So we're going to give that a copy. So again, real quick, let's LS see what we have in there. It starts with 2021. So to actually flash it, all we're going to want to do is type in sudo DD if is equal to that file. So that's going to be the uh, Ubuntu image file and space of the drive. So we're going to have that equal to our flash storage and then block size is going to be equal to 10 megabytes just like that now when i hit enter it's going to look like it hung up there what it's doing is actually going through the process unfortunately there's no like a uh, progress bar or anything like that so we just have to wait and we'll see what we get and there we go if it is successful this is what it's going to look like and now what i'm going to do is reach on over here i'm going to hit this reset button which is very convenient and pop out this SD card, pop, just like that. And it should boot us right into our Ubuntu server. And boom, there we go. We're technically running uh, our very own Ubuntu server. And with this machine, particularly the uh, default login stuff is root and the password is banana pie. Now probably one of the very first things you want to do when you uh, log into a root server system is create your very own sudo user. And that's very easy to do. You just type in add user and then the username you want. At that point, you're gonna go ahead and give it a password. And then here, this information is not really important unless if you're actually gonna have multiple users on the server, but I usually give my full name anyways and skip all those by hitting enter. Yes to proceed. And there we go, almost. We need to make that a pseudo user and you just do that by add user, the username, and then adding pseudo at the end. And there we go. So now at this point, I can actually do SU to Brandon, which will switch our user. And then if I CD into our home directory, there we go. 
So now at this point, it's really up to you what you want to do with your server. You can run a Jellyfin Media server. You can set up Yacht, which is one of the very best ways, in my opinion, to get into Docker. It makes it really easy to spin up various applications. And through that, you can set up a transmission client, a ebook server, music players, really whatever you want. You could set up home automation. You could set up Nextcloud, which I actually think is what we should do because it's going to be pretty simple. This is going to be with Snap. And of course, this is just a, a demonstration. I do recommend to check out down below. I'll link to a lot of the different guides and tutorials on various things that you could actually do. And this device should be able to handle like Jellyfin and all that just fine. You might not be able to like load up a Minecraft server. And I will note when I say Jellyfin, it can handle streaming the media that to a client that can support the format. You may have to transcode your media on your computer so it doesn't have to transcode on the device because it's not a very powerful device and anything above like 1080p is probably not going to run very well. And you can find more information on all that stuff on the actual Jellyfin documentation. And getting into Nextcloud, I know I have not spoken very well of snap packages and that is when it comes to desktop applications in my personal opinion and preferences. When it comes to the server, there's actually very high validity for using them. And this is one of them. So if we just do a simple snap, I'm already messing up. If we do a sudo snap install nextcloud, hit enter, type in our password, and you can see it's downloading the nextcloud snap package from the stable channel. And there we go. So now I believe it's snap a list to see all of our snap packages, and you can see nextcloud is right there. Of course, we need to see what our actual IP address is. Now it did say that right once we logged in, but if you don't know, we just go IPA, enter, and it should be right here under ETHO. If you're connected to Wi-Fi, it might be under WLAN, but mine is going to be 216.44. So now let's go ahead and switch over to our web browser. And I put it in right here. And there is Nextcloud. You can see it's saying to create an administrator account. So you just go ahead, type in whatever you want your information to be. And then hit install, save. And if we wanted to, while it does that, we could even jump over here and type in something like htop to kind of monitor what it is doing. It's running an actual install process, so it is using quite a bit of resources in terms of the CPU. But you can see that when it comes to services like this, RAM, a lot of RAM doesn't hurt. But running one or two services like this on just a plain server install, you're not going to need too much. As you can see, it's only using about 500 megabytes with uh, Nextcloud running and actually doing an active install. So let's go ahead and jump back over here. And then when that's done, it only took a few minutes. We're going to go ahead and install all of the recommended applications. Nextcloud is tru truly a really good piece of software if this is the kind of thing you're looking for. And it looks like we are just about wrapping up here, going into our little introduction to Nextcloud. And you can see if I go ahead and actually jump over here, now that it's not actively running installation processes, it's really not using too much CPU. RAM is a little bit up because it's has more applications running, but that's just to kind of show you what's going on there. From here, we could go ahead, skip through all this, Let's test our uh, file upload speed, because that's one thing that uh, can be negatively affected depending on your hardware. For example, this uh, Pi, it's not a Pi, it's a Banana Pi Zero, same company. But the upload speeds or sending files to this guy compared to what the transfer speed should be on my network is greatly depreciated because of the hardware. Let's go into documents and I should have like a Linux ISO or something somewhere. This will work, it's a B-roll zip. So let's go ahead and drag and drop that on in there. It's about five gigabytes. So I'm gonna go ahead and minimize that. And we can see about 18 minutes, five minutes remaining. So 24 megabytes a second. It's a little slower than I would prefer, but it's not, not bad. But in the sake of time, we're gonna stop there. That's just one example of numerous things that you could do. Like I mentioned, there's gonna be links down below. So you can check out on various guides. Again, the one that I'd really recommend you look at first if you're kind of at this stage or you're looking for the very first thing to install is the guide on Yacht. In that video, I demonstrate both, I believe, Pi-hole and Jellyfin, so it's definitely worth checking out. Just like it's worth checking out today's sponsor, PCBWay. A link to them will be down below as well. Uh, with all that, I do hope you all have an absolutely beautiful day, and goodbye.